OK, this is the telescope. It's an 11 inch Smith Cassegrainian uh, reflector. And a brief rundown of the parts. This, is, of course, is the main scope. Um, it's a simple. Um, Ah, the smell of fresh optics. Right, so what you got is th these are relatively cheap for the size of s the size and compactness of the scope. And they w the way they work is they have a primary mirror here, which takes the light from infinity, or reflects it up to a secondary mirror, which is this thing in the middle here, which is curved that way and that folds the optics back and brings the prime focus to about here um, and the reason these are so relatively cheap is turns out that if you want to take light from infinity and focus it to a point you actually need a parabolic mirror and parabolic mirrors are a pain in the ass to make so the um, manufacturing thing that makes these things possible is the primary mirror is actually spherical and spherical mirrors are doddle to make but they don't focus the light to a point so you actually need a corrector and that's what the glass thing on the front here is this it actually makes a very slight optical correction um, which then means that you can actually get away with a with a, a spherical mirror now um, there are two things you can stick on the back you can stick eyepieces or you can just put a camera at prime focus and that essentially just turns the whole thing into a giant uh, camera lens um, so you won't be able to see it I don't think but oh yeah you can no, there's Jupiter up there there's my scope and there's Jupiter so let's go take a look at Jupiter okay so let's take a look at Jupiter the first thing you'll notice is there are moons and you'll also notice apart from the fact that the uh, camera can't hold the focus that um, there are that the planet is a disk so let's go for a higher magnification eyepiece so basically the shorter the focal length of the eyepiece the higher the magnification so this is about what 40 or something and so we're going to go for about three times the magnification we're going to go down to a 15 millimeter eyepiece so let's hike the Is it a 40? Yeah, it's a 40. Okay, and uh, let's donk in the 15. Now let's see what we say. And I'll zoom right in. So if I zoom right out again, you get to see all the moons. And, okay, things you'll notice about Jupiter is, first of all, it's not spherical. It's really quite elliptical and that's because it's spinning like a son of a bitch it spins about once every eight hours um, the second thing you'll notice is it's actually shimmering like hell and that's not my unsteady hands that's the atmosphere and this gives you some idea of the problems of a telescope um, of uh, telescope. Jupiter, it turns out, is just below what the human can, uh, the human eye can resolve as a disk. Um, so this is right on the limit of what humans, human eye, the human eye can see in terms of a non-stellar source. But you'll know, even on hot days, you can see the shimmer of the air. Well, when you're looking at objects this small it's a much bigger problem and the more so when you've actually got something like this and zoom 
So the human eye is about that sort of size um, and it can resolve just about something the size of Jupiter. This, something this big can actually resolve something about one sixtieth of the size of Jupiter. So if you imagine this is Jupiter you can resolve with good um, with this sort of telescope you can resolve something that's about um, 60 um, specks all the way across Jupiter. That's the sort of resolution you can get with this telescope. But of course that means that you're much more now dependent on the seeing conditions. So for instance even with the human eye um, with bad seeing you can sort of see it shimmer. Um, which of course means that if you try and look at it with this um, you're actually limited by the seeing, not by the optics. Um, so these, uh, the, the, the bigger the telescope, the more demanding it is of seeing. Um, this, by the way, is just a counterweight. Uh, the telescope is horrendously poorly balanced, so that's just a way of um, balancing it out. So, that shimmer that you see there, there's Jupiter again if we zoom all the way in so at the moment we're almost entirely limited by um, the seeing just so you know though the, the moons are just on the limit of the resolution of this telescope so on a good night you would actually be able to resolve those as discs but um, this was one of the reasons why they put Hubble into space is so it didn't have to deal with all this crap with the atmosphere and you actually see quite a lot of detail on Jupiter there you can see the north and south equatorial bands the polar regions I'm just going from what I can see oops on the little screen here you can't see the red spot at the moment um, and it's quite frequent that you'll get transits in the moons so the moons will go in front of the planet and you'll see a shadow in fact I've got some of those recorded from when I was on Pine Mountain ok that's Jupiter and I don't know whether you'll be able to see there's a couple of moons there's a transit going on you can see the transit I'll be buggered I'm pretty sure yeah Yep, take a, take a look. Double transit, or just 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 follow the illuminated. Uh... There we go. And now I can record it along with the version I've got earlier. Okay, this is Jupiter a little further on. Just put the. Uh, Camera up on the eyepiece.